anime begins with two elders from the Reiken clan, Lemoto and Obu, predicting an era of destruction. Not long after, they were surprised by the appearance of Comet Kusyu, which was a sign of the disaster. At the same time, a baby was born in a remote village in the city, and after 12 years, the baby has grown into a child named Oriku, who lives in the golden era of Sansia. Meanwhile, several children were seen preparing to participate in the grand tournament to become Clan Reiken students in the city. However, a maid named Raychan forbids them to stay inside the inn unless they have a special hidden ticket. Then, they were surprised by the arrival of Oriku, who brought the special ticket. Eventually, he became a participant who could stay at the inn. On the other hand, Oriku's success in finding tickets attracted the attention of one of the participants named Kayuno, who came from the Yuntai country. Kayuno went to Oriku to ask how he got the ticket. He said he would tell if Kayuno was willing to be his servant for one day. After the two agreed, Oriku said he got the ticket from a grandfather he helped approach a woman shopkeeper. At the same time, Raychan was betting with someone who told her to sell 100 radishes in a day, and if she didn't succeed, she had to stop being a Reikin clan representative. However, it turns out that the price of the radishes that she will sell is very high, making her desperate. Afterward, Oriku, who was there, was surprised by the arrival of his servant, Ochu. Ochu says that all their belongings have been robbed. Therefore, Oriku made a deal with Raychan to help sell the radishes in exchange for him getting food until the exam started. With ingenuity, the radishes were sold out in no time. Then, as agreed, Raychan gave them some food. Not only that, but she gives a key and a coin in return for Ochu. In the next scene, the tournament begins. On the 1st of December, all participants were instructed to cross a long bridge that only children under 12 years could cross. There, Oriku again meets Kayuno, who invites him to cooperate. Then, on the way, Ochu accidentally dropped a bag on the bridge. Not long after, they saw a water vessel, and participants needed gold as a medium of exchange to take water from the vessel. Because none of the participants brought gold, it made them despair, and they chose to give up. Afterward, Oriku told them that this bridge was made of gold. Finally, all the participants were busy picking up gold on the bridge. On the other hand, Raychan secretly helped Oriku complete the mission by leaving a golden vessel for him. However, a problem arose when one of the participants tried to lift the water vessel. Fortunately, they safely made it to the bridge's end. Afterward, Oriku, Ochu, and Kayuno arrived at a village gate. The gate can only be opened with the water they previously collected. With this success, the residents gave the three of them a lot of food. Meanwhile, the other participants who managed to survive became very jealous of the services rendered to Oriku. Moments later, he was visited by a participant named Shushin, the second son of the Shakeshu Empire. On the other hand, the three participating brothers who were very upset with Oriku, named Sakushi, Unikushi, and Rikushi, wanted to attack him. Just as the attack occurred, Oriku suddenly shouted to summon a guardian ninja. He had realized the test they were facing next. The test is that the participants must try to get out of the village. In the morning, when Oriku walked with Kiyuno, he saw the three siblings bullying another participant. He shouted to call the guardian ninja back. As it turned out, the participant was named Bunho, the son of the Soran Empire. Soon after, Bunho invited Oriku to cooperate so he could be protected, but Oriku declined the invitation because he had other plans. Elsewhere, Shushin tries to persuade Ochu to stop being Oriku's servant and give him information about Oriku. After Shushin got the information, he started to strategize. On the next day, suddenly, Banhu came to Oriku and his friends and told them what had happened. Banhu said he was adopted as a grandson by a grandmother named Ryo. One day, he sees Ryo fighting with the village chief's wife. She has a hidden relationship with the village chief. Oriku concluded that they could take advantage of this opportunity to get out of the village. After that, Kayuno went to the village chief and discussed the matter. At the same time, it turned out that other participants were trying to gather various information by providing assistance to villagers. Meanwhile, Oriku seemed still relaxed and hadn't made any movement. Not long after, Kayuno, who had returned, started telling what he had talked about with the village chief. Kayuno has a plan to make Ryo and the village chief's wife reconcile. Then, he went to meet Ryo to complete his mission. Finally, he was allowed to leave the village. Before he left, he told Oriku that Ochu would betray him. The next day, Kayuno became the first participant to get out of the village. On the other hand, Oriku still hadn't made any moves. After that, he discovered that Ochu had betrayed him just as Kayuno had said. He found this after she came to see Oriku and asked permission to leave because she had completed her mission. Elsewhere, several other participants had been allowed to leave the village. The scene changed when Oriku walked and accidentally met the three siblings, who had not successfully completed the mission. The three of them begged him to help them, but he refused. Finally, after a long silence, Oriku prepared to make a move. The other participants were confused by what he was doing because he was helping residents whose names were not listed on the mission. In fact, Oriku continued his mission by helping 120 residents. Seeing this, the three siblings thought that there were no more residents they could help complete the mission. 
However, Oriku said there was still one person he hadn't helped. Then, he angered the three siblings to lure the guardian ninja out. When the guardian ninja was about to help him, she said that Oriku was still not enough to help her. Hearing that, he decided to continue the mission and help the other residents. One day, Oriku again provokes the arrival of the guardian ninja. Because he continued to interfere, she was annoyed and asked for a Raikonzon coin that Raichan had given him. However, Oriku surprisingly refused to give the coin. Instead, he planned for the village to have a currency system. Unfortunately, the village had refused because his village had been using a barter system for generations. At the same time, it looks like Obu and Raichan are watching the tournament. Not long after, Lemoto arrives and says he will take her post if Obu continues acting as she pleases. In the village, Oriku, who failed to persuade the village chief to return, provokes the arrival of the guardian ninja and gives Raichan the key to complete her final mission. Oriku managed to get out of the village. Elsewhere, it appears that the guardian ninja is Raichan. The scene switches, and several participants who have managed to get out of the village deal with a monster. Seeing the monster, the elders were surprised because the monster used in the tournament was very dangerous. Then, Oriku appeared carrying a water illusion sword, a very valuable gift item. With a single strike from the sword, the monster and all the snow that covered the place suddenly disappeared. Unfortunately, due to Oriku's actions, the water illusion sword was destroyed, and Obu came and got angry at him. She searched his clothes and found possession of gold. Someone who has the gold can later become the Reikin clan leader. However, when Obu was about to save it, suddenly, the gold flew and disappeared. Lemoto, seeing the chaos caused by Obu, gathered all the elders and discussed the matter. After all the elders had gathered, they agreed to hold an additional competition and eliminate the excessive number of participants. In the next scene, all participants are gathered to participate in an additional competition. The elders will judge the rake and flow of each participant. The participants began to be called to come forward. When it was Oriku's turn, the elders were shocked to see the legendary heavenly aura within him. Then, after all the elders discussed, it was decided if the three participants who passed were Shushin, Bunho, and Ochu. Of course, that made Oriku very annoyed with the elders. Then, Kayuno and Oriku got an explanation as to why they didn't pass the final test. Apparently, Kayuno didn't pass because his Raikon was at the lowest level of the other participants, so the elders recommended he carry out a mission in the Monpo district. While the reason Oriku didn't qualify was that none of the elders could train Oriku's heavenly Raikon. However, Elder Kayun is willing to accept him as a lucky charm in her team. Later, when Oriku showed the coin Raichan had given him in front of all the elders, Lemoto realized that he had chosen the wrong participant Raichan had recommended. He thought that Ochu was the one Raichan chose, not Oriku. Therefore, Lemoto decided to grant Oriku one wish. Oriku requested that he be a circuit overseer. Then, Obu was ordered to accompany him. After the Reikin tournament ended, the participants began to continue their new lives, and only Oriku was left to live in the wild. After Oriku is placed on Mount Reikin, Obu comes and invites him to return to his residence. However, he was still restless at the thought of his Reikon. Finally, Obu tried to cheer him up. On the way, Obu explains that there are several sacred places on the mountain, and one of them is Musoho, where she currently lives. She shared that she was ranked fifth among the Reikin clan chiefs and her Reikon level was lower than the other elders. To celebrate Oriku's first day as Obu's student, she takes him to the academy cafeteria. Apparently, their arrival was enough to attract the attention of all the students who were there. After returning home, Oriku was surprised after Obu gave him a pile of materials he had to work on that night. He explained his goal of joining the tournament as he wanted to enter the world of a recluse so he could live longer. But Obu says if the place is just a myth. The most important thing to becoming a clan Reikin disciple is strong determination and how he persists in the process. Two years later, Oriku had done the same routine every day. He soaked in the herbal water every morning and went to the academy to study. On that day, Elder Kaun recounted the dark history that occurred in the Mapu era several hundred years ago. At that time, there was a lot of brainwashing and killing of heroes. After studying at the academy, Oriku went to the Hiyomoho restaurant, which is a very scary place. Next, he met Reichan in the forest, who brought him food. Afterward, they talked about their lives after the tournament was over. Oriku has received word that his old friend Kayuno has mastered water Raikon. Raichan then teases him if he can only use his Raikon after two years of studying. However, for that reason, Raichan planned to teach Oriku some martial arts techniques. Unfortunately, he had not been able to regulate the flow of his chi, so she gradually taught him about it. It didn't take long. He had now mastered the technique Raichan taught. On the next day, Oriku returned to training with Raichan. However, the disapproved Obu told him to bring the person who had taught him. When he met Raichan, she didn't want to accept Obu's challenge until Oriku said that Obu had insulted her. Hearing that, Raichan was angry and went to meet her. In the next scene, Obu and Raichan are fighting. In the fight, she was defeated by Raichan. With this victory, Raichan asked her to comply with Oriku's request. As it turned out, Oriku asked Obu to seriously train him. 
Hearing this, she was very upset because she had been specially training him all this time. One of them is that she gives the herbal water that Oriku uses for bathing to improve and increase the body's resistance and train his Sokonkotsu. Sokonkotsu is a place to store energy in the body. Elsewhere, Kayuno is described as going to Mount Reiken to continue his training. Back in Oriku's scene, after several baths using herbal water, he was ready to take his training to the next stage. Obu explains that she will train him with the Muso Kenkotsu method she created herself. This method is more flexible because Oriku can change the method at his will and be adapted it to various circumstances. However, the method wasn't as easy as he expected. If he has mastered the Muso Kenkotsu method, it turns out that he still can't start Reiki training because there are still 10 more stages to go through. In the following days, Oriku would study at the academy in the morning and continue his training with Obu in the evening. One month later, he went to Reichan's place to tell her that after practicing using the Musoko method, all the techniques she had taught him in the past had disappeared. Reichan concluded that it was because the method Obu taught was at a higher level and thus eliminated her teaching technique. Hearing that, Oriku asked Reichan to teach another technique that would not be eliminated by the method. Because he continued to insist, she taught him a technique called Tenshiho. Using this technique will make it easier for Oriku to run and climb. Within a day, he managed to learn the technique. On the next day, after school, Oriku went to Homoho restaurant to get some food to give Reichan's training partner, a bear. On returning home, he saw Obu reading an exercise book. Then she said that his training was currently at level 8 and told him to look for the blood fruit that only exists in the Seyunho area, a very difficult place because it is under the supervision of the authorities. Therefore, Oriku decided to take the entrance test to Seyunho. The supervisor there was very surprised he wanted to take the test because, at that time, he was still at the Tanteki level, while people who were allowed to take the test had to be at the Reiki level. Then, Oriku went to Reichan's place to borrow a weapon. There, she taught him a sword technique. On the other hand, Elder Reikon, who received information that Oriku would take the entrance test to Seyuno, told the officer to leave it alone and focus on monitoring the other students. Meanwhile, Elder Kaun registered his students to take the test. The scene changed when the entrance test to the Seyunho area began. All test takers will be accompanied by senior students named Gakuhun and Kakue. After arriving at the test site, Gakuhun explained that they would be there for five days, and the students were freed to research all kinds of plants. But on the way to the designated location, the other students were tired while following Gakuhun's movements. Then, Oriku said that if they continued like this, they would not arrive at their destination in time. Hearing this, the students became more excited and resumed their journey. After a long run, they stopped to look for lunch. Gakuhun explained a little about the types of plants that were there. Not long after, with the knowledge Oriku already had, he returned with some fruit for them to eat. Suddenly they were surprised by something that came to the place. As it turned out, the creature was not a monster but just a small fox. On the other hand, Ochu has prepared a plan. However, the plan failed, and they were attacked by several monsters. Gakuhun then ordered them to withdraw. Seeing this, Oriku stepped forward and attacked the monsters to save the other students. Due to the incident, Gakuhun decided to cancel the test and return. But, Oriku stopped him and called for Obu to come to the place. Not long after, after she arrived, she ordered the students to continue their journey while she and Oriku tried to find the cause of the monster's arrival. Turns out, the monsters were just a trick made by Obu to get her the blood fruit. Elsewhere, the elders found out what Abu was up to after she sent a letter stating that she was leaving the Reiken clan. At Oriku's house, before Obu left herself, it turned out that she had left a document to help Oriku train. One day, Gakuhun and the other students came to Oriku's place to thank them. After everyone left, Banhu remained there because he wanted Oriku to teach him sword techniques. Hearing that, he asked Banhu to make him a teacher and obey all the orders he gave. After they agreed, Oriku started training Banhu. He taught Banhu that the most important thing in fighting was controlling emotions. Later, while Oriku was practicing Banhu's sword skills, he realized the benefits of the Musoho method that Abu had taught him. Then, Oriku went to see Reichan and asked her to help train Nashio so he could see the energy flow within him. As it turned out, the energy flow in his body was like a path with many branches. One month later, Banu's abilities had improved so much that it was even harder for Oriku to deal with him. After that, in another scene, Reichan asks Oriku to look back at the energy flow inside him. At that moment, his energy flow had turned into a pillar filled with light. It indicated that he had successfully passed the eighth stage. The scene changed when Oriku felt that his training was getting boring. He planned to go to a place where he could escape his boredom. On the next day, he took Banhu to Reichan's inn. There, he talked about his desire to practice challenge mode together. While they trained, Reichan would look for materials and plants for her to sell. However, before they set off, Oriku asked Reichan to help watch him as he opened the outlet of the eighth level of his energy flow. But, in the process, Oriku was shocked by the pain that assaulted his body. Fortunately, Reichan swiftly managed to bring him back to consciousness. 
On the next day, Oriku went to take care of the permit. Unfortunately, the supervisor who was there didn't allow it because they weren't led by students who were already at the Renke Rapin level. Finally, Oriku showed the sign the five elders had given him, and the supervisor couldn't help but give him permission to fill out the permit document. To fill in the permit documents, he met Rachan to ask for her full name, but she refused and asked him to leave. In another scene, Lemoto depicts several elders waiting for the arrival of Elder Shichi, who has just returned from a trip. Then Elder Ryuken apologized to him for the theft committed by Obo and Siyunho. Lemoto, who knew Rachan and Oriku were in that place, was furious. Besides that, the elders talked about the divination technique that was being developed by Lemoto at the moment. Meanwhile, Oriku and his two friends at that time were dealing with a snake monster to get the blood fruit. From their journey, they finally discover that Rachan is Lemoto's daughter who chose not to live with her father because of something that happened 30 years ago. The scene continues to describe the event. Back then, the Raken clan had been attacked by a very powerful nine-tailed fox monster. However, because the elders couldn't defeat him, they used a special method to seal the fox inside a girl's body, Rachan. This makes him unable to use magic power and can only use martial techniques. The scene switches when Oriku gets a summons ordering him to meet the elders. He was summoned because Elder Shichi, in charge of the Seyunho area, wanted to meet Obu's student. During the meeting, Oriku received a gift from Elder Shichi. Then, they went to Seyunho to meet Rachan and Banu. On returning to Obu's house, Elder Shichi asked permission to see the energy flow in Oriku's body and gave him a pill to increase the strength of the energy flow in his body. Then Elder Shichi told why he was so kind to Oriku. It's because he wanted to repay Obu's kindness to him in the past. The next morning, there was a commotion at the academy. An expert council member named Shiho Shinjin came to ask Lemoto to hand over Obu to him. This was opposed by the elders. At the same time, it was seen that Obu was giving a report to Elder Ryuken about what she had found. Not long after, Oriku came to see Obu and asked what had happened. Obu explains that while descending the mountain, she found evidence that the Shinryoku branch has recruited civilians freely. Then she estimates that the branch has used the Kongen Reiki method, which will strengthen its members in a fast but very dangerous way because it can make people who have used it not long live. However, Oriku instead said that it was just Obu's hunch. After Obu left, Reichan came to the place and told him not to underestimate his teacher. Even though Obu was a very reckless person, she was the Reiken clan leader who had put in a lot of effort. Back in the scene where the elders met, Shio Shinjin was very angry after Elder Ryuken handed over the accusation document from Obu to him. However, he could not provide any evidence to refute the allegations. As it turned out, Shio Shinjin used the Kongen Reiki method because he wanted to use the civilian population to gather Jinku Renkin so he could increase his stalled strength. Not long after, Obu came and challenged Shiho Shinjin to a duel. At the same time, Oriku took the opportunity to make a bet. The scene switches to the fight between Obu and Shiho Shinjin. During the fight, he was very surprised because Obu could withstand all his attacks easily. Finally, she defeated Obu, and because of his defeat, Shiho Shinjin realized his mistake. Before he left, he gave the Kakonzen sword to her. Then, on Shiho Shinjin's way home, he was confronted by another expert council member named Koshodo who was disappointed by Shiho Shinjin's defeat. Therefore, Koshodo turned Shiho Shinjin into a donkey. After that, Koshodo sent a letter containing a threat to Lemoto. Of course, that made Lemoto decide to provide attribute training to the Reiken clan students. Elsewhere, Koshodo sent two of his students to monitor the movements of the Reiken clan, while Oroku, who realized he was being followed, ended up fighting the two students from the expert council and defeated them. Then, he went to meet Kayuno. Meanwhile, when Oriku returned home, he asked Obu how she could defeat Shio Shinjin, who was already at the Gane Rapin level. She said her theory that strength level had no effect in determining the victory of a battle. Then, since Oriku had made it through the eighth stage, Obu would teach him Kenpo. After Oriku had mastered the first stage of Kenpo, she ordered him to develop the technique alone, so he sought help and went to Reichan's place. However, because Reichan wasn't around, Oriku kept imagining and thinking about how to develop Mosu Kenpo at Homoho Restaurant. Seeing this, a chef asked what he was thinking and finally explained his problems developing his sword technique. Then, the chef said that the sword technique cannot only be developed by imagination and must be practiced directly. Hearing those words, Oriku realized that he was no ordinary person. Afterward, he asks the chef for help to make him a student. After the two agreed, they practiced until he mastered the sword technique. One month later, all of the Reiken clan students gathered to get an announcement about attribute training. After returning home, they saw Oriku training again with Obu. She asked him to be serious and not to play around in training. To master the new technique, he must succeed in subduing the spirit within the sword given by Obu. The scene switched at the attribute training event in Sokan province. Students will participate for one year. Meanwhile, Oriku wants to take advantage of the opportunity to revisit Totofu village, his birthplace. 
In the next scene, it is depicted that the Reiken clan students begin to carry out attribute training. Oriku decided to go to his residence to see the condition there. However, he was a little confused upon arriving there because he felt the residents were cold toward him. On the way, Oriku finally met the village chief and told him what really happened. The village chief said that after Oriku left, an organization called the 7000 Gates came and managed to make people who did not have Raycon turn into hermits by drinking holy water from the organization. Even his childhood friend, Kotora, has become a part of that organization. Elsewhere, it can be seen that Oriku's father named Ofuki has proven his sincerity towards the head of the organization of the 7000 Gates named Master Shu to make an in for all members of the organization. However, due to a large number of required funds, Ofuki was hesitant to fulfill these requirements. Then, he arrived at the place and tried to expose the lie made by the organization. Feeling cornered, Master Shu finally tried to kill him. However, after his unsuccessful attempts, he began to provoke all the residents by saying that Oriku was a demon. Hearing that, he was angry and drew his sword to kill Master Shu. Suddenly, Kotora stopped Oriku and tried to convince all the residents by telling them about the kindness the organization had provided. However, he still intended to kill Kotora. Before that happened, Ofuki took his son away from that place. In a scene at Oriku's house, he finally finds out that the letter he had sent never reached his parents. They were surprised by the residents who had come to chase him away. The enraged Oriku got up and decided to kill all the 7000 Gates organization members. In the middle of the fight, one of the teachers who fought Oriku released poison from his body. Everyone was shocked to see him sucking all the poison. Then he asked Master Shu to tell the elders of the 7000 Gates organization something. After that incident, Oriku was increasingly hated by the entire population. However, Ofuki supported his son and said that clearing his village of the 7000 Gates organization was probably the training that Clan Reiken had given him. On the next day, Oriku traveled for two days to the village of Reikachin to meet Reichan to explain what had happened to him. Not long after, he met Bunho, who was there because he was still waiting for a friend who would cooperate in carrying out the training. Oriku then invited Banhu to go with him, while Reichan did not want to interfere in the matter. However, after she was persuaded, Reichan was finally willing to help Oriku. The scene changed when Oriku and his friends kidnapped Kotora to ask about the whereabouts of the leader of the 7000 Gates organization. However, Kotora said that he didn't know the whereabouts of the organization's leader, all he knew was the whereabouts of one of their members who was hiding in the mountain. Using Reiki energy, Oriku managed to catch that person. Unfortunately, he was only an errand boy from a four-star elder in Mukoke City. Hearing this information, Oriku and his two friends rushed to the city. When they got there, Auriko told Bunho to infiltrate the organization's headquarters by pretending to be a Shusi. When he entered the organization room, Bunho was surprised to see a man and several women without clothes. After he came out, Bunho relayed the information to Oriku, saying that he couldn't find the person they were looking for. However, Bunho met a six-star elder there. Then, Oriku told Bunho to tell him everything he saw in that place. Oriku deduced that the four-star elder was the woman beside the man and asked Reichan to go inside and seduce the six-star elder. Unfortunately, the six-star elder didn't like Reichan and kicked her out. Because of that, she got angry and beat Oriku. As his plan didn't work, Oriku disguised himself in female clothes and tried to seduce the six-star elder. Unfortunately, his attempts failed again after he was defeated by the six-star elder. Fortunately, Reichan came to rescue him. Then, after capturing the two elders of the organization, Oriku forced them to expose the lies the organization had made to the residents of Totofu village. However, the six-star elder said that their plan wouldn't work because the residents wouldn't be able to accept that fact. On the contrary, if they exposed the organization's lies, Oriku would be hated even more. The six-star elder said that the 7000 Gate organization did all that because they couldn't increase their strength anymore, so they chose to commit fraud to earn money. Hearing this, Oriku planned to create his own sect to change the villagers' minds. The sect was named the Kyushu Area Intelligent Administration Bill. Meanwhile, the two elders named Kain and Suika finally agreed to help Oriku. On the other hand, it turned out that the villagers were thinking of a way to get Oriku out of place. When the two elders arrived at the village, they began to spread the demon created by the organization and said that the organization had taken advantage of the villagers of Totofu. At the same time, Oriku and his friends began to carry out the charade they had planned by creating an aura of darkness in the village. Not long after, Reichan came and pretended to be a wise princess and managed to destroy the Aura of Darkness. After that, Oriku appeared wearing a robe and became the leader of the elders. He said that he would return and build an altar in the village in one month. In the next scene, Oriku orders Kain and Suika to prepare the necessary materials. With the help of the residents, the construction of the altar began. At the same time, Oriku is trying to gather Reiki energy which will be channeled to the altar. However, one day Kain saw that Oriku was having difficulty gathering his Reiki energy, so he went to Reichan and asked her to talk to Oriku so he wouldn't push himself too hard. 
Then, Raychan went to Oriku and talked. Hearing that, he explained the obstacles faced in gathering Reiki. The scene switches again when the villagers try to destroy the village head's house, which will be used as a Reiki energy path. Fortunately, Ofuki managed to stop the villagers and save the village chief's house. Elsewhere, Oriku started to gather his Reiki energy. In the next scene, he is seen preparing to activate the village altar. However, the resulting Reiki was not stable enough and almost made him fail. Surprisingly, the comet shards that fell during his birth suddenly helped him so that the altar could be built and the economy of Totofu village could improve even more. After Oroku succeeded in building the altar, the residents again asked Kain and Suika to ask for wealth and prosperity. Knowing that Oroku said he would be back in three days, he spoke in front of everyone. On the other hand, the news of Kane and Suika's betrayal had reached the ears of the 7,000 Gate Organization's elders. A leader then sent one of the elders, Sachi, to confirm the truth. Together with Kotor, Elder Sachi began to travel to the village. In the middle of the trip, he exchanged stories with Kotor about their past lives. In another scene, when all the villagers gather, Oriku begins to tell about the beautiful world and the prosperity the residents will get if they become sage. However, it takes 1500 to 2000 years to get to that stage. There are only 1000 selected people who can become a sage. Hearing that, the residents were disappointed and gave up before trying it. Oriku gave encouragement to the residents so that they try to be able to achieve it. With the residents' passion, he can make them want to work and help them achieve their goals. The working residents were paid with money from the village altar. At the same time, it turns out that Oriku had submitted a report on the fraudulent act of the 7000 Gates organization. Meanwhile, Elder Sachi arrived at Totofu village. He ordered Kotor to give a letter to Kain, who, after discussing it with Suika, Kain, decided to meet his old friend. Kain and Elder Sachi fight. Kain, who was almost killed, was helped by Raychan, who came and managed to save him. After that, Oriku and his friends took Elder Sachi to the hideout. There, he forces Elder Sachi to join and trick him using a raccoon-busting poison. After this incident, news of Elder Sachi's betrayal reached the head of the organization of the 7,000 Gates, Yoshojin. Because of that, he then gathered an army to carry out the attack. In the next scene, after a month of Oriku forming the Kyushu Area Intelligent Administration Bill, many people have become followers. On the other hand, Oriku learned about Yoshojin having the power source of the moon and stars. In addition, Raychan knows that Oriku has been using a prohibited method called Kongen Nenkatsu which can influence the residents to continue to be enthusiastic about work. Oriku said that he did all of this so that the entire population could achieve their goals and they could quickly gain raccoon and become a sage. At the same time, it turned out that Yoshojin and his troops had arrived at the village. After seeing a strong enough enemy, they finally decided to camp while waiting for reinforcements. At night, Elder Sachi is seen meeting Yoshojin and telling him to withdraw his troops because the enemy to be faced at this time is led by a genius disciple from the Reiken clan. At that time, Yoshojin refused and asked Elder Sachi to meet him with the leader that Elder Sachi meant. Not long after, Oriku's shadow came to the place and asked Yoshojin to give up and join him. Hearing that, he just laughed and refused Oriku's invitation. It turned out that he had learned that Oriku was using Konga and Nenkatsu to influence all the residents. Then, Oriku and Raychan came out, and a battle broke out in that place. In that battle, many Oriku troops died trying to fight Yoshojin. Elsewhere in the village, Kayuno came to help the Oriku army. As for Yoshojin, who realized it was just a trap to weaken his strength, decided to run away. Oriku tried to block it using an illusion. However, it turned out that he was still overwhelmed when he faced Yoshojin. At the same time, Yoshojin knew that the person he was dealing with was not Oriku but Kane. Then, he appeared and fought Yoshojin. Yoshojin's immense strength made it difficult for Oriku to deal with him. After that, Kayuno came to help Oriku. Unfortunately, Kayuno, whose strength was still not strong, was easily defeated by Yoshojin. Seeing this, Oriku, who was furious again, attacked Yoshojin. Luckily, when Oriku was about to be killed, Raychan finally came and managed to save him. After the fight, the next day, Oriku went to Yoshojin to ask him to cooperate again. On the other hand, it turns out that Kayuno is still a little doubtful about the goal he will have created for his Monpa. One month later, Yoshojin and his troops decided to join Monpa and make him grow even more. Even so, many Monpa members disagreed with Chikyo because of the Kongen Nenkatsu method, so they fought each other again. One day, Oriku summoned Bunho to negotiate with Daiming Koku. Oriku sent him there because it was Bunho's hometown, so it would make it easier for them to negotiate. Then, the scene moved when Shushin was seen heading to Komio's office to ask permission to investigate Monpa Chikyo, but the officer there said she would have to wait a few more days to get the permit. When Shushin was walking outside, he accidentally met Gaku Keio, who was in trouble because his form had not been approved by Komio's office. When they were together, not long after, they were visited by a waiter who told them that there was a guest who wanted to meet Gaku Keio. As it turned out, the guest was Bunho. 
the three of them gathered and told about the journey they had gone through. Shortly after, an officer from Komio's office came to the place to bring the documents that Shushin had asked for. Seeing so many documents, Shushin then scolded her. The officer named Inanna explained that Komio's office is the only place that takes care of all Monpa's documents, making them so busy that they don't have time to help with Shushin's problems. She brought a letter from the leader of Monpa Chikyo, who had sent his representative, Bunho. Hearing this, the two friends were surprised and questioned Bunho's decision. Bunho then explained his decision and tried to convince Komio's office to cooperate with him. Not only that, he even knew all the information about Danana. Meanwhile, Shushin still refuses to give his support and accuses Monpa Chikyo of being a fraud. When Shushin returned to his residence, he told about the incident to Ochu. They concluded that what they encountered was not Bunho but Oriku. At night, Shushin gets a letter from his members asking if he wants to invite him to meet. The scene changed. Oriku and Gaku Keio were seen waiting for Shushin to arrive on a boat. After Shushin appeared, Oriku tried to convince him. However, Shushin remained firm in his stance and planned to report Oriku to the Reiken clan elder. When Shushin asked Gaku Keio to go, it turned out that Gaku Keio refused and chose to be with Oriku. Hearing this, he became very angry and frustrated. One day, Shushin decided to go and find all the evidence about Oriku and Monpa Chikyo to report to the Reiken clan elders. In the next scene, after Oriku orders Bunho to negotiate with Gaku Keio, he spends his time compiling his training report. Meanwhile, Bunho was trying to convince Danana to cooperate with Monpa Chikyo so they could negotiate with Daimin Koku. Their Bunho actually got a very difficult question for him to answer. When he returned, Oriku and Gaku Keio were waiting for him to ask about the result of the negotiations. Bunho said that Danana was still considering it and asked him to renegotiate. After he had managed to convince her, Damon Koku finally agreed to the existence of Monpa Chikyo. In the evening, all the members and residents of Totofu Village celebrated the success. During the celebration, Bunho suddenly received a call from Elder Ryuken, which made him gloomy. The next day, Oriku was called by Elder Ryuken, who wanted to do an inspection. There, Elder Hokaku and Obu were waiting for him. Not long after, Oriku finally appeared, and Elder Hokaku gave the letter of accusation that Shushin handed over to the Reiken clan. Knowing this, Oriku did not put up a fight and admitted that all the accusations were true. However, he did not intend to apologize because, in his training, there was no prohibition against setting up a Monpa. Afterward, Oriku told them he never took any money from Monpa Chikyo, but the elders still didn't believe it. Then, he asked Elder Ryuken to see his sincerity and purity using Monshinken. Hearing that, Elder Hokaku actually didn't agree because this method was very dangerous for Oriku, who was still at the level of Renki Ruppen. Then, Oriku asked Elder Ryuken to give him three days to build a place for the Monshinken Arena. After returning to the village, Oriku ordered his followers to build the place. A few days later, the building was finished, and the elders finally arrived there. Before Monshinken started, Oriku gave Yoshujin his training report letter and asked him to submit the report to the Reiken clan elders if anything happened to him. When Elder Ryuken was about to start the ritual, Oriku suddenly attacked him. He could easily withstand Oriku's attacks. Then, Elder Ryuken caught Oriku inside the Monshinken illusion. There, Oriku encounters the spirits of the enemies and the people he sacrificed to build Monpa Chikyo. He continued to express his innocence to them. At the same time, Elder Ryuken was in awe of Oriku's confidence. However, it all ended because Monshinken had entered his deepest heart. Oriku, who fell into it, saw people suffering from war and how they struggled to build Monpa Chikyo. Finally, he began to question his decision, and at that moment, his body felt the effects of Monshinken. Seeing this, Reichan planned to ask Elder Ryuken to stop the ritual, but Elder Sachi stopped him because it was Oriku's chosen path. Then, they were all shocked that Oriku used the power of Reiki to strengthen his heart. Seeing that, Elder Hokaku asked Elder Ryuken to release him. With the determination, Oriku showed, finally, Elder Ryuken ended Monshinken. After that incident, Oriku was taken to his residence. Even though they had forgiven him, it turned out that the elders still intended to punish him for the fraud he had committed regarding the rules that had been made by Monsenmei, an institution that made rules for all Monpa. Elder Hokaku ordered to disband Monpa Chikyo and return to the mountain. Afterward, Oriku called Suika and asked her to show the Monsenmei membership documents to elders Ryuken and Hokaku. The two elders were shocked and asked how Oriku got approval from Monsenmei. Turns out, Oriku had bribed Monsenmei using the money he had gotten from the Genten Bureau with an agreement that if they couldn't return the money for 10 years, then the Genten Bureau would take over Monpu. Finally, Elder Ryuken decided to settle the matter Oriku had done. In the next scene, as his training was almost over, Oriku handed Monpa Chikyo over to Yoshojin. He told Yoshojin things to do after he left. Then, Oriku joined his friends. However, he planned to visit his parents first. At home, Ofuki asked where Oriku had gone. He lied that he went to practice and didn't know Monpa Chikyo's arrival in the village. 
On the next day, the villagers were seen celebrating the arrival of winter. At the same time, the Reiken clan students were preparing their research reports. Meanwhile, Monpachikyo's successor elders were already preparing to carry out the plan Oriku had given them. The scene changes when Oriku prepares to leave the house even though he doesn't want to leave his parents. There, he recalled his past memories in the village. Soon after, just as he had resumed his journey, he met two small children who had insulted him. Then, Oriku gave them his robes. On the other hand, Limoto was in awe of Oriku's accomplishments in training. The scene shows the two small children who received the robe from Oriku returning the robe to Ofuki. Ofuki just looked at his son's robe. This is the end of the anime. The moral this time is that someone's talent will develop with the guidance of the right teacher. Besides, we need to use our knowledge in a good way.